Miss Allison, for uh, making some time for this interview. Can we start with a general question first? It's been 100 years ago since Northern Ireland was created. How would you say what's the constitutional, constitutional status now of Northern Ireland in 2021? Well, we are part of the United Kingdom by choice of the people of Northern Ireland, and that's how it should be. Uh, sadly, that choice has been undermined by the iniquitous protocol that the EU has put upon us, whereby, unlike the rest of the United Kingdom, though we joined the EU as one nation, we have not been allowed to leave as one nation, and instead Northern Ireland has been held hostage by the protocol within the EU's single market, subject to the EU's customs code, and it's the EU VAT regime, all of which means that now many of the laws which govern our economy in particular are made not in Belfast, nor in London, but in the foreign jurisdiction of the EU and made by those we do not elect, laws which are made over which we have no say, no opportunity to amend, no opportunity uh, to frame to suit our own circumstances. That is a transfer of sovereignty, I believe unconstitutionally, mm -hmm. uh, to the EU and that is why there is an ongoing legal challenge to that fundamental undermining of Northern Ireland's position as an integral part of the United Kingdom. So the protocol, I believe deliberately and consciously, has sought to uh, undermine our status within the United Kingdom and is fulfilment of the boast of a certain EU official that the price of Brexit would be Northern Ireland, such was the punitive attitude of the EU towards the democratic decision of the people of, North, of the United Kingdom to leave the EU. Yeah. So in this centenary year, is that a year of celebration for unionists or a year of concern then? Well, it's, it's both. It's celebration of the fact that Northern Ireland uh, continues after 100 years as one of the four nations of the United Kingdom. Of course, it should be remembered that Northern Ireland and uh, the rest of the United Kingdom have been politically and economically united for centuries and indeed we can go back to the acts of union of 1800 to find the formal uh, a, a constitutional position of uh, this part uh, uh, what continues to be this part of ireland within the united kingdom uh, and so yeah we celebrate that and in celebrating that we celebrate the will of our people and what is more democratic than that than celebrating that the will of the people which created Northern Ireland as a continuing part of the United Kingdom has been honoured for these hundred years. But what equally is more disconcerting than the fact that that will has been consciously and deliberately undermined by the iniquitous protocol. Can you explain to a Dutch audience who's maybe not as well versed in the politics and history of Northern Ireland, why the protocol is such a concern and that, that it, especially for unionists it goes deeper than just empty supermarket shelves or obstacles and train well if the people of holland decided uh, and i would say it would be in their wisdom but be a matter entirely for them but if the people of holland decided to leave the eu uh, but one of the uh, parts of holland was left behind uh, with its laws no longer made in Holland, but made in Brussels. Then I think the people who lived in that part of Holland might begin to understand the resentment and indeed the anger that exists in this part of the United Kingdom that we have been left behind, uh, uh, having made, been part of a collective national decision to leave the EU and that we have in those circumstances been denied Brexit. What we got instead was the protocol which delivers Northern Ireland uh, out of the United Kingdom within the ambit, annexes as, as a century within much of the EU's ambit and control. And that is so undemocratic, so antithetical to our position within the United Kingdom that it is rightly causing resentment and anger. You've called that Northern Ireland Protocol is almost like a waiting room for Irish reunification. Can you explain that and the thought behind it? Right. What the Protocol does is to cut us off from our main 
economic market, which is Great Britain as the, 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 the part of the world to which we sell most of our goods and which we attain most of our goods. And what the protocol does, it fetters that trade by putting in place all the custom, all the custom and single market rules which result from treating GB as a third country, as a foreign place. Uh, and therefore, that diminishes our economic links and our opportunities for economic prosperity. And what it does is, it seeks to orientate us away from that natural market that is GB and to force us to orientate towards the Irish Republic in the belief, I say, that they think that that will ultimately produce a parallel political alignment away from London to Dublin and help create the circumstances for Irish unification, even though that is not something that the people of Northern Ireland as a whole seek or embrace. I, I think it's working on the template of the EU itself. The EU was formed uh, and the, the very core of its very first treaty was to obtain ever closer union. How was that ever closer political union to be attained? It was to be attained by ever closer economic union. And it's the same template. How do you achieve Irish unification? Under the protocol, by ever closer economic union within the island of Ireland, by boasting the all island economy, while you diminish and jettison the United Kingdom attachment and economy on the belief, in the belief that it is then a relatively short step from economic unity to political unity. And that is the evil genius of the protocol to undermine the constitutional position and status of Northern Ireland and to compel us in a direction towards Irish unity against the will of the greater number. We spoke earlier to Ian Paisley Jr. from the DUP. He said, no chance in hell this is, just, this is a step up to reunification. Is he, you know, uh, underestimating this threat, do you think? Well, he's entitled to his view, but it's not a view that I can recognize or reconcile with the reality. If you take a part of the United Kingdom and say to it, your laws will not be made within the United Kingdom, they'll be made elsewhere in order to coordinate you with and align you with the rest of the island of Ireland, so that you're under the same single market rules, the same customs code rules, the same VAT regime rules, then it's abundantly clear to me that you're creating the ethos and the incentive for Irish economic unity. And it is but a short step from that to political unity. Is unionism divided in Northern Ireland? Unionism has united greatly, to my encouragement, around the legal challenge to the protocol, which is challenging the very uh, substance of the protocol and saying it conflicts so fundamentally with the acts of union that made us part of the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. which guaranteed us unfettered trade, that you traded freely and equally across and throughout the United Kingdom, the protocol comes along and fetters that, so we say that's a breach of the Acts of Union. We also say, of course, all that has been imposed upon us without any consent from the people of Northern Ireland. And that is a breach of the consent principle, which is supposed to underline the machinations of how we are governed in this space. It's a union agreement. I'm talking about yeah. the supposed undertaking in the Belfast Agreement that there could be no constitutional change without the consent of the people of Northern Ireland, and yet we have seen the transfer of sovereignty, we have seen therefore the, the constitutional change without any consent. And that's another limb of the breach uh, uh, of the judicial review. And that, of course, has united all unionism. And there is not a single unionist, and this is very telling, who supports the protocol. Mm. Not one who thinks it's a good idea, because we can all see that it is undermining the very ethos of Northern Ireland as part of the United Kingdom. But as we have seen last week, there's a lot of anger and unrest in unionist communities. And, that, and what we've seen, that, that can't be just about a uh, Republican funeral from last year. That, that, that a part of it is the anger about the protocol, isn't that right? Oh, absolutely. 
uh, because the people uh, sometimes are ahead of their politicians, uh, but they can see that their birthright as part of the United Kingdom, uh, the right to leave the EU as we joined as one nation is being denied to them and taken away from them. Uh, violence is not the way to go, but that's why I've been very strong in saying we need to have a forthright political campaign against the protocol, because if we don't, then we leave a vacuum that less desirable forces will fill. And that's one of the th one of the things. But what really I draw out of that scenario is the protocol, which forces the border for where it should be, namely the international boundary with the EU uh, to the REC, that was done uh, at the behest of Irish nationalism under the threat that if it wasn't done, there would be violence. So the protocol, uh, the midwife of the protocol was and is the threat of Republican violence. That's what caused the border to be pushed from where it ought to be uh, to the REC. Now, it's no great surprise, regrettable as it is, that when violence and the threat of violence is seen to work, as the manifestation of the protocol itself shows, then that others will think uh, that they too could threaten that. It doesn't actually help. Yeah. But that's how. That's part of the genesis of how we get here. Yeah. Proponents of the protocol obviously say we've done this to put, to protect the Good Friday Agreement. We to prevent the hard border. Sorry. The sorry where, where in the Belfast Agreement mm. does it say you must have a single market on the island of Ireland? Where in the Belfast Agreement does it say you cannot have a border on the island of Ireland? The Belfast Agreement has been grossly misrepresented. Uh, but to, to say those things when it says none of that. The Belfast Agreement barely mentions the EU. It had nothing to do with the EU, and yet it has been exploited and misrepresented to create the end that the EU wanted of annexing Northern Ireland out of the United Kingdom and into its orbit of control. So I totally repudiate any suggestion that there is any justification or the protocol within the Belfast Agreement. Where the protocol stands in sharp contrast with the Belfast Agreement is that agreement's supposed acknowledgement and acceptance of consent. And yet the protocol is a flagrant disregard for that because it's been put upon the people of Northern Ireland without a shred of consent. Yeah, you could also argue none of this would have happened. No protocol, no unrest, no anger, uh, if there had been no Brexit. Sorry, are you saying the people of the United Kingdom should be denied their democratic right? It was a democratic vote uh, where the people of the United Kingdom voted to leave, just as the people of Holland shouldn't be denied their democratic rights. So the people of, Northern, of the United Kingdom shouldn't be. But the problem in Northern Ireland is that we didn't get Brexit. We got the protocol, which is the very denial of Brexit. It's the very thing that doesn't allow us to leave. It's the very thing Brexit. that, sorry, it's the very thing that doesn't allow us to take back control. It hands control to Brussels, mm -hmm. removes control from this part of the United Kingdom to a foreign jurisdiction. That's the very opposite of democratic control. You're waiting for Brexit still, basically. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's what I voted for. Last question, and we come back. This is to, to, to circle it to the first one again. How do you feel? How secure are, are you about the constitutional status of Northern Ireland? Are you confident that you will be part of the United Kingdom? Or don't you take anything for granted at this very moment where everything seems to be very fluid? When our own government negotiated the protocol that undermines our position within the United Kingdom, of course I don't take anything for granted. And I'm very, very clear that if we do not destroy the protocol, the protocol will destroy Northern Ireland as part of the United Kingdom. There's no point in me gilding it. That's the reality. Once you create circumstances where a part of a country is set apart and ruled by a foreign jurisdiction for the purpose of ultimate delivery to the completion of that exercise through Irish unification, then you've created a circumstance 
where you've undermined your position within the United Kingdom. And as a unionist, that's unacceptable to me. And that's why my motivation and my determination is to do all that I can to undo that, to restore us as a proper integral part of the United Kingdom and thereby to honour the democratic vote of the people of the United Kingdom. Do you feel betrayed by Boris Johnson, who's the leader of the Conservative and Unionist Party? On the protocol, yes. You don't trust him anymore, in, in that sense? I doubt if I ever trusted him, but certainly the protocol is a demonstration of <laughs> why he ought not to be trusted. Because, yes, he's the man who told us yeah. no British Prime Minister could ever do what he did, that you could never have a border in the Irish Sea, yet he delivered it. So of course I don't trust him, yeah. but I do trust the people of Northern Ireland. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.